Hi, my name is Nancy Atkinson. I'm a science journalist and author. On this edition of Authors Everywhere, I'd like to introduce you to my book, Eight Years to the Moon, The History of the Apollo Missions. The Apollo program was where astronauts traveled all the way to the moon and landed there. Six Apollo missions landed on the moon, starting with Apollo 11 in July of 1969. The Apollo 11 astronauts only stayed on the moon's surface for a few hours, but on later missions, the astronauts stayed on the moon for several days, and they even had a little car, a moon rover, that they drove around so they could explore the lunar surface and collect moon rocks to bring back to Earth. Now, since the Apollo program happened in the 1960s, which is now over 50 years ago, a lot of the details have been forgotten about why we went to the moon and about everything it took, everything that was needed to be designed and tested and built to reach the moon. You may be familiar with the soundbite of astronaut Neil Armstrong saying, that's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Or you may have heard that the astronauts put a flag on the moon, but there's a lot more to it than that. One fact that seems to surprise people is that the Apollo program required the efforts of over 400,000 people. These were people from across the United States and around the world. These people worked at NASA and at contractor companies and factories, building the rockets, the spacecraft, the computers, and all the various components to keep the astronauts alive and in constant communication with the Earth. Now, all these people needed to figure out how to do so many things that had never been done before, and they needed to do it quickly, too. The United States wanted to be the first country to reach the moon. They were in a competition, what's been called a space race, with Russia to see who could get to the moon first. Now, since over 400,000 people worked on the Apollo program, and since every person has a story, there are hundreds of thousands of stories that all went into going to the moon. However, many previous books focus on stories about the astronauts, which is totally understandable. I mean, who doesn't love astronaut stories? I sure do. But I wanted to tell some of the stories about people who work behind the scenes, who the general public has perhaps never heard of, but yet these people made important and sometimes pivotal contributions to getting to the moon. I knew I couldn't talk to all 400,000 people, but my book tells the story of Apollo through the eyes and experiences of about 60 people. What I think is most important is that the people who work behind the scenes to get to the moon, they worked incredibly hard and they sacrificed a lot. They worked long hours, working six to seven days a week, and sometimes they had to uproot their families and move to a new place in order to do the work. They gave their lives to the space program every bit as much as the astronauts did, only they didn't get much recognition. So that's why I'm so honored to tell their stories now. I put together a music video and it introduces some of the people who I wrote about in my book. It also shows some of the components, parts, and the rockets and the spacecraft that needed to be built. Also in the video are the various jobs of the engineers and scientists who worked on Apollo. So as you watch this video, there are a few things I'd like you to think about, and I'm going to challenge you to do a small research project. Your project could be learning more about the history of spaceflight, you know, what did it take to launch the first rockets, or it could be about the history of the Cold War and why we were challenged to try to reach the moon, or it could be about the types of jobs that are part of NASA and exploring space. I think this video will inspire you to learn more about all those things and the people who made it possible. The video includes a wonderful song by a singer and songwriter named Ben Bedford, and I hope you enjoy it. They told me that I couldn't catch the sun 
They told me that I couldn't catch the moon The story for the future has begun They will see me rise into the blue My sound and line and compass are in hand The constellation circle in the view And I'll point the prow as far away from land And they will see me rise into the blue of the night Looking down on all as if it's new I see it all in another light And they will see me rise into the blue They told me that I couldn't catch the sun They told me that I couldn't catch the moon The story for the future has begun They will see me rise into the blue They will see As you can see, there were lots of job and lots of people who worked on Apollo. I hope you enjoyed the video and now you can start thinking about your research project. Um, parents and students, if you'd like to read stories about the Apollo program, my book, Eight Years to the Moon, is geared probably for students in the upper elementary grades to middle school to adults. If you're looking for a book for, for younger students, may I suggest this book by Catherine Thimish. It's called Team Moon how 400,000 people landed Apollo 11 on the moon. This book tells stories about different people than eight years to the moon, but it's a wonderful collection of stories of the tremendous effort it took to reach the moon. Thanks so much for watching today, and I wish you good luck on your research projects.